Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Namaste. I hope uh, you are uh, looking forward to uh, to complete this course and uh, preparing well for your examinations. Those learners who have registered for the examination schedule next week, uh, I hope you must be taking uh, your uh, preparations seriously. I received one question about the pattern of examination. So, pattern of examination for this uh, course will be <clears throat> primarily based on uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, these multiple choice questions are drawn from almost all the sessions. So, you have uh, uh, many lectures, I think 28 lectures total and all uh, from all the lectures some or uh, other concept is taken to prepare this uh, question paper questions uh, the nature of the question is of a multiple choice type as well as you also need to remember that these mcqs are not only uh, for testing your memory they are aimed at testing your understanding of the subject. So, there might be some examples wherein you will be asked which kind of only information will be useful in this situation or what kind of diagnostic to be applied in this situation or what is the uh, right intervention in this kind of organization. So, you will be having few questions which will be based on your memory like uh, how many cycles, so what is the third uh, component of uh, the application inquiry cycle. But there will also be questions which are more application oriented. So, uh, so that the learners who have uh, not only uh, memorized the concepts, but they those who have also understood the concepts, they uh, should get enough opportunity to uh, demonstrate their learning, their capability and uh, I must share that in last year's exams uh, we have had out of couple of hundred examinees we had one person, one examinee who scored uh, 100 percent, 190 percent marks he was in the in, term, in, in percentile term he was uh, uh, he scored 100 percentile so uh, there are people who uh, can score who are able to who could able to score uh, could score more than 90 percent marks so if you prepare well you will certainly do uh, and demonstrate uh, show your performance which later on you can feel proud of. If there are any other questions, uh, we can take a few of them. So, uh, as more questions get uh, uh, shared, I would like to share a few things which I think uh, are important for us to understand the role of OD in the current times as the title of the course is OD in 21st century management of change and organization development in the most contemporary times or in future. So let us talk about what can be 
the uh, major forces uh, for OD, which uh, any OD professional or any manager who is in charge of management of change should take care of. So to understand this, we need to understand the sources of disruption. In the current times, the first major disruption we see is happening through happening because of COVID-19 virus. The such a horrible pandemic this whole world has faced. Um, this is this has been very very unfortunate times for many many of us who have lost the loved ones who have. Uh, seen the illness, who might have suffered illness because of that. Uh, but this pandemic has also opened up something, some possibilities which were there, but people, organizations, states were not very well aware of or they were not very open to embrace those possibilities. Uh, one of that is working from home, online interaction holding online meetings and uh, carry on your work in the online environment. So even after pandemic, we will see most companies will continue some form of work from home. So there is bound to be flexibility in terms of openness of organizations to avoid working from home. We will be seeing a lot of online working happening, if not fully then partially with large, uh, range, huge range of job, we will see this trend. And uh, that has implication on all managerial aspect, that has implication on management, leadership, performance management, training and development, onboarding, in all aspects this trend is going to change. So OD interventions should be customized according to this new reality. Second big, uh, the second disruption is coming from the changing models of businesses large number of organizations are transferring their operations online. Restaurant, for example, they are not only serving the customer in person, they uh, in their premise, uh, restaurant are as much there online as they are there as a physical facility. So that is also a very important factor and you will see large number of companies are converting their operations maybe partially or fully on a digital format. So every organization is trying to be to carry out the digital activities digitally. Uh, E-commerce has seen a great, great uh, phenomenal growth in last one and a half years and uh, along with the working from home, this e-commerce, the trend of e-commerce uh, is seen in in many many industries uh, whether and that the, the range of those, those industries which are going digitized uh, that range in, uh, starts from restaurant to taxis to auto drivers to driver services to medical advice legal advice architecture so on and so forth uh, so this is the second train. The first train is work from home will stay and many organizations will uh, embrace that and realize that potential uh, for their business benefit. Number two, digitization is happening in all businesses and a lot of businesses are getting converted into digital businesses. Third, disruption is happening because of automation and artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a great tool and this world is awakening to that is that can draw major insights, very very important insights 
based on that data and because of the digitization process uh, because of the digitization process uh, data generation is happening in all aspects of the business processes uh, from the customer interaction to uh, supply chain all aspect of supply chain since large number of them are digitized or they are digitized partially or fully at each stage a large chunk of data is getting created so ai is becoming important because ai helps in analyzing the data and getting the uh, insight from that so those insights are giving uh, some major uh, ideas about process transformation or uh, product development similarly automation thanks to the uh, major developments in the field of uh, robotics automation is uh, changing the nature of jobs in almost all industries uh, they are replacing human work and human involvement so th these are the three major disruption and because of these disruptions od also has to change field of od and management of change need to take care of this and they are they should be at the forefront because they uh, these subjects this course actually talks about uh, embracing the change this subject actually talks about leading the change so they have to embrace these uh, this field has to embrace and uh, evolve itself uh, so lot of od interventions we discussed during the session and in many many sessions there uh, those interventions whether it is done for family business or for education institutions hospital non government organizations and corporates those interventions also have to be made digitized and uh, 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 there is a, a, a great scope of uh, putting in the in giving the inputs of not only ai not only digitization but also giving the input of virtual reality and augmented reality so suppose uh, we are doing some intervention at individual level and most of the individual level interventions were supposed to be given in person but now because of the new realization and new situation uh, uh, in person interaction are not uh, uh, will not remain as common as they used to be before pandemic so how to uh, use uh, uh, augmented reality or virtual reality to create that kind of experience this is going to be a major input for the od intervention in current times of course od intervention new od intervention will have to be uh, to be devised to be developed uh, to help uh, teams to work online to manage team uh, per team performance or departmental performance online for these kind of situations we will have to make uh, to to develop new interventions new od interventions so the three skills required for future uh, can be divided into three major chunks three major components first is lifelong learning aspiration growth mindset comfort with change a uh, lifelong learning aspiration mean, simply means we all have to be ready to learn new things because new things are coming very fast new things are coming in the field of technology those things are changing the business processes those things are changing the uh, the nature of human interaction in organization and outside of the organization so uh, uh, people should embrace changes they need to uh, aspire to learn new things second growth mindset talks about using failure as opportunity to learn for the future success so that growth mindset which which uh, which talks about which aims at uh not looking at what are the challenges what are the problems it is about looking at how to see this problem as opportunity so that is uh, the growth mindset and comfort with change these three things will be required as human skills 
we also will require creativity critical thinking and social intelligence uh, the job of collecting information and storing information and uh, uh, and capturing the data all that is taken care of by the machines so human being have to bring in their humanness into the process and that humanness is reflected in creativity uh, in critical thinking to evaluate multiple options available to solve any problem to develop any organization and social intelligence because uh, it is only human being who are going to work online in person on the machine of the machine and so uh, how to connect with people will remain very important capability of managers but that also have to be relearned uh, in the to suit the new environment which is more online in nature so creativity critical thinking and social intelligence are uh, another set of uh, capabilities going to be very relevant in future in the near future rather and third is skill in the software design big data analysis uh, they should be uh, organizations and managers and leaders have to be uh, ready to develop the appropriate software design which take care of the current environment and uh, analyzing the big data these are the uh, three skill sets of the future how uh, od can help in that od can help in in many of these and first of all od can help in identifying the uh, uh, and articulating the questions which are being thrown by uh, uh, the dynamic environment at organizations so first question is how can we uh, reconfigure the workforce and workplace to increase agility raise productivity and empower workers while maintaining the culture how to be agile because technology is changing very fast globalization is becoming much faster with the help of technology so organizations have to be more agile in responding to the need of the environment as your as you position to leverage technologies and take advantage of long term trends accelerated by them so uh, od has to make organizations and people ready to not cope up with technology but to embrace the technology and use it trying to use it before others use it to convert that as competitive advantage not as an obstacle not as an obstruction of their work in their work what we are we are we doing to close the skill gap as we shared before that future skills are going to be significantly different from the skills required in current times so uh, uh, ods and the management of change rest on a very important data that is the skill gap what is the skill gap means what is the what are the desirable level level of competencies and what are the current level of competencies that uh, difference must be consciously tracked by uh, uh, the organizations and people and managers are you clearly and transparently communicating your plans and supporting workers in making transition large number of people are going for entrepreneurship they want to carry out their own work uh, but uh, those who are uh, uh, working in this environment they also need to recognize that even if the people are not aspiring to start their own business they suddenly like to know what my organization and how my organization is doing business so uh, that makes the importance of uh, transparency in the communication very high there has to be transparency in the communication about people what they are doing how they are how organization is doing what organization is trying to achieve all that information have to be communicated have to be shared with the people uh, at much faster pace and that will be more that this this expectation will will be will be strengthened even further in years to come are you supporting their lifelong learning od has to gear up management of change has to gear up to create interventions create platforms facilities in organizations to support 
uh, the employees to keep learning and finally are you leveraging ecosystem partners and increase the effectiveness of those efforts uh, we need to stop considering and significantly uh, we need this uh, change in the attitude to look at channel partners whether it's supplier or advertisers or consultants as the organization's adversary or as the organization's competitor in fact uh, the complexity of the operation is increasing and specialization is increasing as a result of that no one organization no one manager can imagine that they will know every job which his team members or her team members need to discover need to uh, and deliver in the same way the organizations also need to recognize that they cannot do all the work required to create a product required to create uh, a service for the customer i can take we can take this example of uh, uh, vaccines india is recognized as the manufacturer of the world manufacturer of the uh, vaccines for the whole world and uh, we are currently talking about covid shield and uh, uh, covid uh, uh, covaxin these two uh, major vaccines which are being uh, manufactured in india uh, covid shield requires at least nine components 19 components which are which this company the indian serum institute which is the biggest manufacturer of the vaccines uh, it requires to import at least 19 items from the different parts of the world so though we are recognized as the uh, manufacturer for the world uh, as far as the vaccine is concerned that uh, that doesn't mean that india has or this institute in pune has all the inputs available or they can manufacture all the input or they manufacture all the input no uh, they also have to import uh, many of the component using which this uh, uh, vaccine is manufactured so we need to understand that uh, channel partners are extremely important for any organization so they need to work closely and leverage that partnership of uh, with the uh, suppliers with the vendors with the uh, other channel partners so these are some of the things where od need to create new intervention od has to create certain things which can be useful to bring about the desirable change in the organization so uh, these are some of the points which uh, i thought uh, any student of od uh, need to reflect upon in the current times we have seen difficult times uh, and suddenly this pandemic and the things are rising out of uh, this situation whether it's online working or the refocusing on health or uh, restructuring restrengthening our the, uh, health system all that all these things are pointing out the need for change in od in the field of od so um, we thought that this uh, was to be shared and uh, if you have any other questions you can send this to the open platform those who have registered for the course they will still have opportunity to pose the questions to share their concerns if there are any uh, and our team and myself will be uh, taking care of those questions and we will we'll try to address those questions as quickly as possible so thank you very much